Have you ever watched your favorite vloggers and thought, hey, I want to do that. But then when you try, it only ends up getting like 13 views. Hey, we've all been there. The way the biggest creators on this platform are able to captivate us, entertain us, keep us watching to the end, and make us trust them enough to click on their next video before we even fully read the title, it's a kind of internet magic that is very hard to replicate, unless you know some of the secrets behind it. If you've ever felt like your vlogs are boring, but you're not really sure why, and why, even though you're following literally all of the YouTube advice you've ever heard, you're still not seeing growth, then this is the video for you. Thanks to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. I've been obsessed with YouTube and been a loyal vlog viewer for many years, like, over a decade now. My observations as a loyal viewer and my own experiences as a creator on this platform have taught me a lot about what keeps people engaged and what actually helps creators grow an audience. And so I'm excited to share some of the untold secrets of successful vloggers with you in this video. So let's get into it. Secret number one. You don't need a niche, you need a target audience. One of the biggest misconceptions that most beginner YouTubers have is that they need to have a really strict niche. To be fair, that is what a lot of the traditional advice that you see on YouTube focuses on, like having a really clear niche, because it does help with SEO, and it can be really effective that way. I mean, look at my channel. I'm an example of a channel that has grown because of having a very specific niche. But as you may have noticed, I'm not a vlogging channel. If you look at some of the most successful vlogging channels on YouTube, you may have at some point said to yourself, hey, she doesn't have a niche. The top vloggers don't restrict themselves to a single niche. Instead, they have a really clear target audience. This then allows them to create a variety of content, which is pretty essential when you think about it, when your life is your content. Life, you know, generally involving a variety of experiences. So having this really clear target audience and point of view is what allows vloggers to cycle through a variety of topics, but still maintain consistent branding. So next time you're watching your favorite vlogger and thinking, hey, she doesn't have a niche, ask yourself who their target audience might be and you'll probably find yourself narrowing down to one pretty specific kind of person. So for you, my fellow creator, if you are wanting to grow a vlogging channel or become a successful lifestyle creator, I think the most important thing you can do is nail down a really specific audience, have a really clear character in your mind of who you're speaking to, what that person is like, what their vibe is, what their style is, where they like to go out to eat, what they're watching on Netflix, who their favorite musicians are. In the case of vloggers and lifestyle creators, for the most part, this person will probably be quite similar to you, unless you plan on making up an entirely fake persona, which I guess that's your prerogative, but generally your target audience is probably gonna be folks similar to yourself, so it can be good to drill into what are those main commonalities that you might have with your audience so that you can highlight them in your content. Secret number two, every vlog needs to tell a story. Let's just cut straight to the point. Vlogs that are boring, won't get a lot of views. How can you make a vlog interesting? Tell a really good story. I'll be honest, over the years, there have been times where I really wanted to be a vlogger or a lifestyle creator or whatever here on YouTube before I was giving social media tips. And obviously that is not what was very successful for me. And I used to tell myself a lot of defeatist excuses about why my vlogs were performing well. I would say to myself, well, it's because I'm not pretty enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm not rich enough to be interesting to the people of YouTube. And that wasn't true. But hey, I'll be the first to admit that those various privileges are very helpful when it comes to being a successful lifestyle creator. I'm not gonna deny that. Like being rich and beautiful certainly is helpful if you want to like sell your lifestyle to other people because that's a lifestyle generally considered to be quite aspirational. But these things are not required. And I kind of think even if you have all of those things and you aren't good at telling stories, I'm still not sure that your content is really gonna perform that well. I think one of the most underrated skills of being a good vlogger is kind of being a good writer. 
I know that sounds kind of funny because like vlogs are supposed to be nonfiction and like they are, but narrative writing skills are really, really helpful when it comes to both the pre-production and the production of a successful vlog because they help to shape your real life experiences into a cohesive story that's gonna be interesting for others to watch. If you think about it, we do this all the time naturally, just like when we're telling a story to our friends about something that happened in our lives. You might bury the lead so that you can have like an unexpected twist later on down in the story, or you might end your story with a punchline. These are things that we kind of subconsciously do. We take our real life experiences and we figure out how to tell them in a way that's gonna be most entertaining to our friends. And that's exactly what we need to do when it comes to editing our vlogs to make them interesting for our viewers. I think a good beginner exercise to start you off with this is after you filmed your vlog and you're sitting down and you're ready to edit, think to yourself about the events that you documented on camera and think about how if you were going to just tell your friend what happened throughout your day, how you would describe it to them. Write down some of the basic elements, like the main details that you would highlight. And then that becomes your story structure, which then you can kind of base your scenes or your editing off of. You might need to go back and film some more footage in order to make this story work, but that's okay. This is just a really good way to start seeing your vlogs as a story. And ideally, as you move forward in your creator journey, you would start maybe building out these story structures before you ever film. And then you can make sure that you capture all of the content that you need. Once you have that basic idea of how would I tell this as a story to my friends and turning that into a structure, once you've got that down, then it might be worthwhile researching into other common narrative structures that you could potentially use when building a story in your vlogs. Some really basic examples just to give you a sense of it include the linear slash chronological narrative structure. So this is when the author tells a story in chronological order. It might include flashbacks, but in general, it's sort of chronological beginning, middle, end. This is the default that most people go to when it comes to making a vlog, but there's also the parallel structure and in the parallel structure your story or video might focus on multiple characters and events happening to them simultaneously you actually see this employed quite often on vlog channels where there's kind of two main characters so in Kara and Nate's videos we see this a lot Eamon and Beck are another great example of this where you'll kind of follow both characters as they split off onto sort of separate storylines there are also story structures like Freytag's pyramid the hero's journey or the three-act structure I'm gonna link a helpful article in the description that you can check out that lists various story structures like this just to kind of give you ideas of how you might build out a story in your vlogs. If all of this narrative structure stuff is getting a little complex for you, I feel like in essence, it really just breaks down to these two questions. Asking yourself, how would I tell this if it was a story I was telling to my friends over drinks? And what do I want my audience to remember walking away from watching this video? If you can answer those two questions before you start your edit, it's going to go a long way in turning your vlog into something that was just sort of like a straight up diary, like log of your day into maybe a story that can be interesting to other people. Secret number three, you need a consistent vibe and aesthetic. I think the final element here that gains trust with your audience and keeps them coming back again is having a really consistent visual way that you present yourself and your brand in your videos. Using the same fonts, the same transitions, the same style of B-roll or graphics. The repetition of all these things builds up familiarity and therefore trust in your audience. One way you can achieve this is actually through this really awesome offer that HubSpot, the sponsor of today's video, is giving away for free. HubSpot is giving away 18 YouTube templates for business. You can grab them at the link in my description. I'll be honest, I was super excited to partner with HubSpot on this because they truly just want to offer us creators the knowledge and tools and templates that we need to succeed in the world of online business. This YouTube template bundle includes five customizable YouTube channel banner templates, five customizable YouTube thumbnail templates, some video description templates, as well as a YouTube strategy planner. All of this stuff will go a really long way to building up your consistency, both visually and otherwise in your brand, which really, really helps when it comes to growing any kind of channel on YouTube, really. So if you wanna make sure that you've got your YouTube strategy down pat, you've got your branding on point, and you're consistently showing that branding to your audience through your thumbnails, banners, descriptions, and all that good stuff, then 
go check out the link in my description. Like I said, HubSpot's 18 YouTube templates for business, totally free template bundle. So there's no reason not to go grab it. So thanks again to HubSpot for supporting creators and for sponsoring this video. The thing is, as you continue working on building up both your storytelling skills and honing in on who that really specific audience is, and of course, working away at making your videos just look and feel more high quality, your audience is gonna start expecting a certain level of quality from you. So you wanna make sure that you deliver that consistently so nobody ever feels disappointed when they click on one of your videos. You just wanna make sure that there isn't a misalignment in terms of expectations and what you're able to deliver because that's one of the fastest ways to get somebody to stop watching your channel. It's kind of like how the coffee shop just across the street from my place always seems to be randomly closed when I make my way over there to get an iced latte in the afternoons. And so now I've just given up on trying. So the YouTube equivalent of that is like posting a video that isn't what people expect. It's like being open at the wrong times or closed when somebody wants you to be open. Like make sure that people know what to expect when they come to your channel and that your videos look and feel and hit that quality level that people have come to expect from you. Of course, that quality level is going to change and evolve over time, especially as you improve as a creator. But I think it's just important to keep consistency in mind, not just in like what your thumbnails look like or what fonts you use, but also in the way you tell your stories, in the way you structure your videos. This is going a little bit meta here, but you might have noticed on my channel that the style has evolved. Even like six or eight months ago, when we'd sit here together at my desk, I would pretty much just film one consistent angle the entire time and throw in graphics and b-roll and stuff as I went but now you can see we're moving around we're doing different backgrounds because I've noticed that y'all seem to like that and I also like how it looks when it all comes together in the end so I try to make sure that I keep that same style in each of my videos now because it's probably what you've come to expect from me being a successful vlogger on YouTube is truly an art and a science and it takes a lot of practice and perseverance to develop the skills that I've been calling secrets throughout this video. If you wanna learn more tips and strategies for starting a YouTube channel and growing on this platform, then check out this video that I made about what you need to know about YouTube before you get started. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having adventures and following your dreams and I will see you in the next video. Bye.